our future at stake. Our future in this whole area hangs in the balance. It drove into Northeast Ohio more than 50 years ago. General Motors building an assembly plant in the middle of nowhere and everywhere. How soon do you need these people? Right now. Lordstown bringing with it jobs and hope for the future. GM built this community. There wouldn't be Lordstown without GM. The plant was the engine that kept the Mahoning Valley going when the steel industry collapsed. This has been the plant that held this community together through a lot of ups and downs. Tens of thousands of people have had a hand in building cars there, cars you see on the road every day here in Ohio, from the Chevrolet Caprice and Impala to the Chevy Cobalt and Cruze. We've produced over 16 million vehicles for the company. We made them billions of dollars. But now General Motors is about to hit the brakes and turn off the ignition of a plant that has become the identity of an entire Rust Belt region. I almost want to cry. GM leaves will survive somehow. It's been three months, three months of uncertainty, stress, and fear since General Motors announced plans to idle five plants in the U.S. and Canada, leaving 14,000 people without jobs. One of those factories this one right here, the Lordstown Assembly Plant. From breaking ground in the 60s to its heyday in the 70s and the 80s to now, this plant has been the heart of this community and in many cases, this entire region. GM has been making small cars here for decades, but that all came to a dead end with the last Lordstown-made Chevy Cruze rolling off the line today. Workers here have been dealing with job cuts for the last few years. Here are the numbers. GM slashed the third shift in 2017, then last year, the second shift. Only 1,600 workers were left inside this plant. And then last November, the heartbreaking news that the entire plant was on the chopping block. The plant and every single one of those jobs. $181 million in annual wages, $35 million in taxes. Tonight, we take a closer look at the impact beyond just the numbers. The people headed in a new direction. After years of making cars, others Packing up families, hitting the road, taking off from the only home they've ever known to go where the jobs are, leaving behind a town now searching for a road map toward its own future. Joe Paganakis begins our in-depth coverage tonight. He takes us inside the town, now being forced to make a sharp turn. Well, Rob, Lordstown Village left with plenty of economic uncertainty, but still hoping its GM plant will find a new vehicle to build. You take the heart away from a body, the body collapses, and I feel like that's what's going to happen to the community. Lordstown employees not only concerned about their future, but also wondering how devastating it will be to Lordstown Village and its 3,500 residents when the assembly plant shuts down in March. Our town can be a ghost town, the way some of our council members and school board members are acting. Mayor Arno Hill says without cooperation from all Lordstown leaders, the village could be in for tough times years down the road. Even though the village budget is okay for much of 2019, when it comes to police, fire, and other municipal services. We're going to keep an eye on it and see how the GM negotiations go. Probably mid-late summer, early fall, we'll take a good look at it, figure out if we have to restructure. Hill says Lordstown has several hundred jobs on the way through the construction of a TJX distribution center and other projects. But will it make up for the loss of 20% of its tax base due to the GM Lordstown departure? We have Anderson to Bow, uh, McDonald's Chipotle distributorship. We have a company called Metallico. They make aluminum billets. We've tried to diversify, but nothing will ever make up for General Motors. And you have a place like GM with 1,300 plus employees. You add in, uh, you know, the other suppliers and folks. Youngstown Warren Regional Chamber President James Dignan agrees the loss of Lordstown GM jobs is a huge hit for Lordstown Village, but he doesn't believe the Mahoning Valley and the region will suffer as badly. Meanwhile, Mayor Hill is hoping GM UAW contract talks this fall will earn Lordstown Assembly a new vehicle to build. GM has been great for this community for 52 years. We're going to keep looking, uh, keep hoping. The core of this community is General Motors. I mean, we live here. Our house value is going to plummet. Still, some GM Lordstown employees are less optimistic and believe GM should live up to its commitment to their community since GM was given millions in taxpayer dollars through a bailout, infrastructure improvements, and job incentives. You're doing this because you're thinking of how to make 
just a little bit more money. I don't know if, you know, this community is able to bounce back after we lose something like General Motors. But there are some economic bright spots for Lordstown. It's brand new electric generating center, which could produce one million dollars in revenue. Still, though, not nearly the revenue the GM plant brought to this area. Lordstown, the city and the plant, not the only ones feeling the impact here. Homabash hits the road and follows the ripple effect of one single plant closure. It is the uncertainty that's hitting everyone hard right now, not knowing where that next paycheck's coming from, not knowing how difficult the next few weeks, months, even years are going to be. It is a village with one gas station, two diners, a pub grill, a plaza with a vet, a pizza shop, and a subway. Just down the road, a dollar store and a Dairy Queen. Every place, every person, every inch of Lordstown by the General Motors plant closure in some way. Biggest fear is the unknown. It's upsetting and once again, it's a little terrifying. Be concerned about your money, your kids, and your well-being. But the ripple effect goes well beyond Lordstown. With the feeder plants going down and General Motors going down, it's not like we lost a plant or a job or a couple plants or a few jobs. I mean, we lost the automotive industry is what it feels like in northeastern Ohio. The nearby feeder plants that worked only on GM products right now are the most visibly impacted. Magna Seating Company, 120 jobs gone. Comprehensive Logistics, losing 180 jobs. Three years ago, they had 600 workers, but every time GM lost a shift, they lost a shift. It's trouble here. At Jamestown Industries, 31 employees will be looking for work come March 8th. Oh man, devastating. Like, I've been here 16 years. Including Bayan Muhammad. Oh yeah, I got it. 16 years spent working at this place. They took my whole life away. <laughs> yes, yeah, bad, real bad. Father of four boys, Bayan started here when he was just 23 years old. Now nearing 40, heading back out into the job market. For many of the feeder plants, there is no place for laid off workers to transfer. No place to immediately fall back on. No, no safety nets. You just got to get out there and find some work. It's the only option you got. A job market about to be flooded with those looking for work. So while these plants are the immediate impact, the bigger concern is that GM's closure is going to stretch into the public sector. The ripple effect is hard to gauge, but they know it's coming. Restaurants, hair businesses, barber business, all kind of businesses are going to be affected because they depend on us to come to their shops. Services provided, tax revenues, bankruptcies, divorces, uh, an increasing opioid problem. Um, all these are the effects of high unemployment. And the unemployment rate in Mahoning and Trouble County is already you know, well beyond the national average, and this is only going to make it worse. Austin Town trustee Ken Carano worried like so many others about the uncertainty. You don't know. That's the problem. It's, it's, it is, we keep using that word, the unknown. We don't know how bad it's going to affect us. It certainly is not going to be a positive. It's going to be a negative. But how negative is that going to be in the future? We're not sure. Despite the lives turned around, many say they understand it is just business. I'm not mad at GM at all. I don't see them wrong nowhere in here. It yeah. just sucks. It just sucks. It's life. Because at the end of the day, life has to go on. And here in the Mahoning Valley, there is always hope. Oh, I always have hope for myself. I'm going to be all right. I'm a survivor. I'm going to do what I got to do to take care of me and my family. So, yeah, I'll be all right. A lot of the workers at the feeder plants we spoke with say they are changing careers now, going to nursing school or trucking school. But it is unimaginably tough for the ones who are older, thinking about having to start over. I'm Homa Bash. The other big story tonight, General Motors laying down the hammer right before the holidays. It's been making headlines for months. Laying off. 14,000 workers. Now one Northeast Ohio city could soon become a ghost town. The president even weighing in. You better get back in there soon, that's Ohio. The battle to keep General Motors in Lordstown <laughs> is still going strong. Thumbs up, victory signs, horns blaring. We're in this together. But people are also starting to learn how to move on. I've lived here all my life. 
It's gonna be a big change to go somewhere else. Sometimes you just have to back up and punt and keep moving forward. Coming up, how secure are the thousands of auto jobs left in Ohio? And finding hope in another Rust Belt Towns rebound. You know, to some it might seem like one plan and a few thousand workers impacted by this closure, but the people of Northeast Ohio know it is so much more than that. And they've been rallying behind the workers at GM Lordstown for months, including today, as they left this plant for possibly the last time. Cleveland State just released a study on the impact of the closure of the GM Lordstown plant, and it says support for the workers left jobless and turning to a whole new career, that is a must. And that is exactly what's been happening at the transition center set up by the local UAW. It helps workers get connected with employment and training uh, resources as they try to navigate this twist in the road. We do resumes, assist with job seeking, help them with computer skills, um, get them onto Ohio Means Jobs website. Some of the counseling GM employees at the center are co-workers who have already started classes or their training for a new career while they still worked at the plant. And it is not just the adults worried about the future. Kids here in Lordstown are left to wonder what's next. And how did we get here from a bustling plant working around the clock to a total idling? The changing needs of the drivers have forced the auto industry to shift gears. For the last few days, we've been watching the last Chevy Cruze to be built at the GM Lordstown plant roll down the line from the body shop to the paint shop to the end of the road today. It has been an emotional journey for the workers building that final car and for the whole community fighting for the future of this plant. From the future of a single plant to the future of an entire region to the future of an entire industry. John Kosick now takes us to the auto show for a glimpse at the road ahead for automakers as the vehicles they produce are changing, leaving the crews and other sedans in the rearview mirror. When GM made the announcement in November to end production of the crews at Lordstown, they also announced the elimination of the Volt and the Impala. They're also ending production of the Cadillac CT6, XTS, and Buick LaCrosse. Their announcement followed Ford's own move last year to end production of the Taurus, Focus, Fiesta, and eventually Fusion. Notice the trend? All sedans. It's a shift. Levin Antonio is president of the Greater Cleveland Auto Dealers Association. Last week's auto show marked a wake of sorts for many of those sedans. It's customer preference moving from a sedan to an SUV. They're up a little bit higher. There is a little bit more room for, you know, people, for equipment, sports equipment, families. And remember, a large portion of the new car buying population is made up of aging baby boomers who like the higher hip point for getting in and out. What automakers like is the bottom line. Bloomberg Intelligence breaking down how much they get for a large crossover versus a large sedan. About $5,000 more, even though the chassis are in many cases the same. They're using the sedan frames, the sedan unibodies, and putting SUV bodies on them. Yes, the industry is moving full speed ahead in two opposite directions, small electric and hybrids, and bigger SUVs and trucks. The latter are now getting better gas mileage than your father's old sedan. Even on a bigger SUV like Explorer, by introducing the new hybrid and getting that 500 plus mile range, you're giving customers the capability. They don't have to compromise on anything, space, but you're getting the fuel economy benefit. While U.S. automakers may be moving away from sedans, foreign automakers are filling the void. Sedans aren't going away. It's just a preference shift right now. In Cleveland, John Kasich, News 5. Stay in hope or get up and go. It is a mental battle for the many families imp impacted by the plant shutdown. And it's not just weighing heavy on the minds of adults. Taylor DeHayes now has one teen's struggle to stay or go. <laughs> Dribbling down the court. You go there and you forget about everything else going on in the world. Your only focus is playing basketball. Bouncing ideas in her head. A lot of stress. <laughs> 
Uh, constantly wondering what we're going to do, what the future holds, where we're going to go for holidays. Caitlin Higginbotham's life is about to pivot. Her father is transferring to a plant in Tennessee after losing his job in Lordstown. The news coming as Kaylin was just accepted to Youngstown State University. I've been taking College Credit Plus classes since I was in like the eighth grade. Um, so I've already had my mind set on YSU. Now possibly sacrificing her education to stay close to family. You might even skip college altogether. It might be, yeah. Kind of lost hope in everything. I've lived here all my life. It's going to be a big change to go somewhere else. The move impacting the whole family. Hello. Hello. Kaylin's mother, Renee, is a bus driver for the district. She's doing what she can to support her husband and her children as they uproot their lives and head south. My eighth grade daughter is really worried about going down because she doesn't think she's going to make any friends. With the fate of the Lordstown GM plant up in the air, kids in these hallways are impacted too. Up to 75 students are still deciding if they'll be walking these hallways next fall. Some of them that frankly are going to stay and hope for a, a plant or a car to be put in this plant. Just a lot of uncertainty uh, creates a lot of um, Oh, a nervousness. Superintendent Terry Armstrong says it's devastating and the district will take a hit. Teachers, students, families, the hallways a little more somber. At senior night, hugs a little tighter. It takes on a different flavor because the uncertainty. Uh, some of them knowing they're moving, uh, some of them not knowing when they're gonna, the rest of the family is gonna be able to move with them. Uh, some of them w still waiting to know if they got a transfer. The celebration was moved up weeks to accommodate families forced to leave town, saying final goodbyes. Tennessee's just kind of been like slammed into my head and now I think I've made peace with it. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know, I don't really want to leave everything here. What put Lordstown on the map? GM built this community. Is what some students fear will leave their home forgotten uprooting lives, leaving Lordstown nothing but a speck on the map. What is this town going to be like a year from now? What town? I feel like there's not going to be a town. In Lordstown, Taylor DeHayes, News 5. Now the history of the auto industry in this area started decades before GM came to town. We visit the Packard Museum and learn about the legacy those car makers left behind when shutdown in Lordstown returns. The people in Northeast Ohio are no strangers to surviving change. Even when the steel mill shut down, they still had their identity as an auto making region. Ohio's auto history all started with the Packard brothers. They developed their first car in Warren, but the company that eventually became auto parts maker Packard Electric all but left after more than a century in the Mahoning Valley. Frank Wiley shows us its history is still celebrated today at the National Packard Museum. The history parked here got people from A to B in style. The Packard car was a status symbol. The new Packard executive. From Packard cars to Packard electric, the symbol helped navigate many through life. Those black and whites are often colored with memories. Time flew by. 32 years. Judy Watson said those were the days. Folks lined up for blocks just to grab an application. We felt that we had a job for life. Until one day they didn't. We went from 15,000 people to approximately 500. Judy clocked out years ago, retired before what later became Delphi Packard. The place let all those workers go, but she stayed near. A lot of people did. This area is very, very resilient. It will have to be, again. We've seen a lot of loss in this community, first with the steel mills, and then with Packard, and now with Lordstown. Everyone in and around Lordstown is impacted, somehow. A good friend of mine's son works there. I'm not sure what he's going to do. He has two small children. Horrible. Horrible. Job loss is terrible on a family. It's just terrible. Charles Olin takes people through history at the National Packard Museum. It rips apart part your social fabric. It, it really does. He saw it split families back then, just like it is now. My sister 
and my nieces and nephews have moved on to uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. So That's life. That's the way it's got to be. After the crash, sometimes all that's left is a shell. A lot of other people are going to lose their jobs, restaurants, and retail. Even so, for the area, it has never been a total loss. Like the products they've built, through time, a better version always emerges. From the National Packard Museum, I'm Frank Wiley. Well, it's a fact. We've lost plenty of auto jobs here in Ohio, but there are still plenty of plants running strong, pushing out parts for cars, trucks, and vans. We check in on those plants and find hope in a former GM plant in Ohio, bustling with jobs once again. This is not only a life and death struggle for this plant and the future of the workers, but for all communities in this area. As Lordstown continues to fight to keep this GM plan open and save this community, Northeast Ohio has been down this road before. In the last two decades alone, we've lost more than a half dozen auto plants from Ford plants in Brook Park, Lorraine and Walton Hills to the Chrysler plant in Twinsburg and the GM Metals plant in Mansfield. Some places have brought in new businesses. Here in Lordstown, a new uh, power plant is generating new jobs, and the ground's about to be broken on a new distribution center as well. Another shutter GM plant in Ohio did find new life. John Kosick takes us there now to show us what could be here in Lordstown. For nearly three decades, this plant outside Dayton pumped out GM trucks and SUVs. Then in 2008, they got the news Lordstown got. The run was coming to an end. The Oscar-nominated documentary, The Last Truck, chronicled the 2008 closing of the GM assembly plant in Moraine, Ohio. And the hope of workers then is one shared by Lordstown workers today. Deep in my heart, I think we're going to get another product. But with the national economy plunging deep into recession and GM into bankruptcy, it wasn't to be. The impact on Moraine was hard. We probably lost about 45 to 50 percent of our annual revenue. The city's goal at very least was to save the buildings that in total were larger than the Pentagon. At the time, scrap prices were high, so there was some value to maybe come in, buy it low, scrap everything out, and make some money off of it. It would sit empty for several years. Then in 2012, Chinese auto glass manufacturer Fuyao began looking to open a plant in America closer to its clients. They were looking to build new, but former Governor John Kasich in Jobs, Ohio, reached out to Free House chairman in China and urged him, against great odds in 2014, to come have a look at GM Marine. Yeah, even his own son against it. So he said, well, I'm going to do it. And today, everything shows chairman made the right decision. The initial plan was for 800 jobs here. Several years in, they're up to around 2,400. And each Fui out job, they estimate, generates three jobs down the line. That's 120 million in taxable payroll. Every property price, you know, went up because Fuyao. We bring this really life again. Fuyao's total investment here is now in the neighborhood of $600 million. And they're not done. Chairman has the vision. You know, he wants to invest another $1 billion in U.S. But depends on what kind of opportunity we're going to have. Could it be in Moraine or possibly a place like Lordstown? Don't know, but the folks in Moraine believe Lordstown is in a much better position than they were 11 years ago. If it's going to happen, because of our current state and the fact of uh, so many folks looking for about 200,000 square feet or above buildings, I think they'd be very successful in getting another tenant. In Moraine, John Kasich, News 5. Now, while cars may stop rolling off the line here in Lordstown, auto parts will still be made right here in Northeast Ohio. Joe Paganakis checks in on our other auto plants and the towns they call home. Well, Rob, unlike Lordstown, the cities of Brook Park and Parma say that their plants have a bright future and may actually see some expansion in the coming years. I get a little emotional about it, but it was a very emotional time. We got very close to being extinct there. Brook Park Mayor Mike Gamella knows how important Ford's engine plant one is to his city's economy. The plant, a community anchor since 1952, peaked at 14,000 jobs, but then in 2007, it went all but silent. They had 60 people in that plant. The foundry was already announced to close. Plant two was already announced to close. So all the dominoes were set. But in 2009, UAW 1250 worked with Ford to reopen engine plant one. Now with 1,800 jobs, building a series of engines that are in high demand in the F-150, Expedition, and Navigator. They brought the new Duratec, which morphed into the new 
EcoBoost 3.5, which morphed into the new 2-liter and 2.3. GM's Parma Metal Center is the only other major auto job provider in Northeast Ohio, currently employing about 1,500. The GM stamping plant uh, is, is an iconic plant to us, and uh, it, it is huge. Parma Mayor Tim DeGeter said he quickly made phone calls to the UAW when he first heard about Lordstown stopping production on the Chevy Cruze, knowing the Parma Metal Center is making parts for a wide variety of other GM vehicles. They haven't just been reliant on, on cars, but you know, they've been relying on SUVs, the crossovers, the trucks, which is what consumers are purchasing. Now, GM headquarters and members of UAW Local 1005 told News 5 they don't expect any lost jobs due to the Lordstown shutdown. The feedback we've gotten and, and what I've been seeing and hearing, I feel very, very positive that uh, they're in a good position. And as for Brook Park's Ford Engine Plant 1? I don't have a crystal ball. Anything can happen. I believe those, those, that plant is solid there for at least the next five years. And Ford Union leaders sending words of encouragement to the Lordstown workforce. If engine plant one was able to reinvent itself 10 years ago, then so could Lordstown with a new vehicle to build. We're proof that it can happen. We've, we've turned the corner toward uh, bringing the membership back. We see great things for Cleveland. Meanwhile, UAW talks with GM on a new labor agreement in September may hold the key to bringing retooling and a new vehicle to Lordstown in 2020. Industrial production, uh, manufacturing is in our blood. It's what we do. But the heart of this Rust Belt region is about to stop pumping out cars and jobs. The key to breathing new life into the Lordstown plant could lay in the future of the auto industry itself. There's hope here. You know, just because one piece is left doesn't mean that there's going to be a need. Can Ohio lure the next generation of automakers? Ohio was once one of the nation's leaders in auto manufacturing, but while those numbers have dwindled, the state does remain the leader when it comes to vehicle testing. As News 5's John Kosick tells us, Ohio also plans to play a huge role in shaping the industry's future. We all know the story of the nation's automotive past cannot be told without Detroit. But just as true, though, the story of the nation's automotive future cannot be written without this place. On 4,500 acres in Marysville, northwest of Columbus, it's the Transportation Research Center, or TRC. It is the nation's oldest, largest, and most comprehensive automotive proving ground in North America. I often describe this place as a big engineering playground. Ron Burton is the executive vice president of TRC, a place that marries physics, mathematics, and any other icks with the childhood curiosity that goes with pushing the limits. There's really kind of the traditional testing where you shake things and try to break it, see when it breaks, uh, apply corrosion, so on and so forth, look at performance. Looking to expand the state's vast automotive footprint 50 years ago, the state of Ohio partnered with Ohio State's College of Engineering to create TRC, which features a seven mile track and literally every road surface known to the industry where in secret, no cameras allowed, auto companies and the government have been testing vehicle and safety standards. But just as the combustion engine is changing, so too is this place. Governor Kasich last year breaking ground on a state funded $45 million automated and connected vehicle testing facility. Our goal is for Ohio to not be behind the curve. In other words, if you have fiber for smart highways, you can put these vehicles on our roads. You can test these vehicles down in Marysville, Ohio, using the, the latest and greatest technology. All part of the Applied Research Division, which focuses on the technology that is coming. I would say that will easily be a quarter of our business within the next three years. Physically, this place may have changed slowly over the last half century. The same can't be said for the work they are doing. I often in presentations des describe it, you know, the last slide's a picture of George Jetson flying the spaceship. The interesting part of that is he does have a handle to steer it. And where we're heading, you're not going to have that handle to, to steer it. In Marysville, John Kasich, News 5. We have car making may become just a stop on Lordstown's road to the future as General Motors decides what to do with a 52 year old plant that will officially be idled in just days and the fight to save it rolls on. I'm Rob Powers. Good night from Lordstown.